Brothers and sisters, the Lord is with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. Jesus said to his disciples, In those days after that tribulation, the sun will be darkened and the moon will not give light. The stars will be falling from the sky and the powers in the heavens will be shaken. And then they will see the Son of Man coming in the clouds with great power and glory. Then he will send out the angels and gather his elect from the four winds from the ends of the earth to the end of the sky. Learn a lesson from the fig tree. When its branch becomes tender and sprouts leaves, you know that summer is near. In the same way, when you see these things happening, know that he is near at the gates. Amen, I say to you, this generation will not pass away until all these things have taken place. Heaven and earth will pass away, but my words will not pass away. But of that day or hour, no one knows, neither the angels in heaven nor the Son, but only the Father. My brothers and sisters, the gospel of our Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Christ. May we see you. I want to share with you tonight a journey. A journey of fear to hope. When I was growing up in the Southern Baptist Church, yes, Father, please pray for me. It still affects me. But I'm trying. You are. <laughs> this isn't a funny sermon. Thank you. I was taught that unless you did X, Y, and Z on that day when Jesus returned, you were going to be thrown into a lake of fire. Imagine a child. I can't remember how old I was the first time I learned that, but it never felt right to me. It always felt scary. And who wants to worship a God like that? I would say to myself. I would refuse to read these. I was like a guy named Marcion from church history. Marcion was a guy who read stuff and he didn't like it, so he tore it out. Thomas Jefferson did that as well. There's a Bible that we actually have where Thomas Jefferson pick, picked and chose, picked and chose? What he read. And what he didn't like, he just tossed out. So I refused to read these readings. I would refuse to look at the book of Revelation. I would refuse to read Daniel. Anything that talked about end times was very scary. And then I got to seminary. And I was forced to read Revelation and Daniel and the other readings. And I came to an understanding. You see, Jesus is saying in our writing today, that these bad things are going to happen. One of the commentaries that I read to prepare said that, that this was written specifically for those Jewish people who had suffered the loss of the temple. Imagine if everything that you believed, everything that you felt, everything that you knew had to happen in the temple. Without the temple, you had no access to God. And now, probably 70 years after this was written or so, probably not that long, but it's gone. The temple has been desiccated and destroyed by Roman troops. The symbol of God's presence on earth was no longer there. Talk about fear. How would we connect to God now? What, was God going to abandon us? Solomon had worked so hard to create temples. This, uh, not this temple, but a temple before that, was, that would lead to this temple. 
but it was gone. The fear was not so much that they would be thrown into a fire, but that they had lost God. But I want you to pay attention today to this particular reading. Because Jesus says, after all this bad happens, and when we read, sometimes I think the lectionary is a little unfair because it doesn't give us a big picture of what's going on. Because we had just heard these words from Jesus about what the suffering would be, and now all of a sudden we skip to this. But once the suffering is done, hold <laughs> tight. Yes, these bad things are going to happen. Yes, the temple is going to be destroyed. Yes, there will be wars. Yes, mothers will turn against sons, fathers against daughters, brothers against sisters, brothers against brothers. But hold still because I'm coming. I'm not going to leave you alone. See, this is the journey to hope. The bad things happen. We all know that. We're living in very uncertain times right now. Every time you turn on the news lately, at least I feel like I'm going to hear about another mass shooting. Mm -hmm. I worry that my mother's social security, the only reason that she, the only way that she can afford to live is going to be taken away. I worry about my patients and, 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 and where they're headed because Medicare is becoming so strict. But I remind myself, as Jesus did in our readings today, I'm coming. I'm right with you. Yes, the bad is going to happen. Yes, the bad seems overwhelming. Every day it seems like we're falling worse and worse and worse into darkness. But our God has not abandoned us. Our God will not leave us. Our God is a light that can destroy every darkness that is alive. Every darkness that surrounds us. Our God calls us out of that into life abundant. <clears throat> From the very beginning of the Jewish faith, we know that there has been an understanding that the age would end. And that didn't change with Jesus. Jesus continued to teach that. But what Jesus' message for us is not one of destruction or the fires of hell, but one of hope. I will be with you. These things will happen, but my shoulders that have been stretched out for you are big enough to hold you and love you and surround you and never let you go. That's the hope of what we call eschatology. My mother paid a lot for me to go to seminary. I need to use a big word in this. And that, that means the end times. That's the hope of the end times. That's the hope of the eschatology to come. That's what Jesus was telling us. Hold fast, my brothers and sisters. Don't, don't, don't worry. I'm here. And I will never leave you. Amen. Amen. Amen.